During this worship time is like um, the the introduction to it was to give you a vision of being in Jesus as a part of Him, and you're one with Him. He's receiving life from the Father, and you get to partake of that life, and then out through your souls, which are on the earth here. He lets that life flow out as we have learned to give it direction. As in the scriptures, it says that wisdom is profitable to direct. And in giving that life out, gives you the opportunity to reap what you sow. More life, more life, more life. This is wonderful. Now we do this as the Holy Spirit shows us, you can do it even if, if you're not feeling the presence of the Spirit or anything. Still, exercise yourself to do it. You know, instead of getting up uh, in the morning and going, this is the day the Lord has made, I'll rejoice and be glad in it. Get up and say, Lord, I release life. Get right into that place of oneness. And you'll find a whole different day. Don't ask, oh, God, thank you for uh, healing today. No, thank you for health that's manifested today. You go to bed at night, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I walked in health all day. Thank you, Jesus. You have given me my daily bread today of health. Hallelujah. All right, so these are things that, that those of you that are, are with us, watching us for quite a while, uh, one mind, one accord. One accord means that we're learning to do things that generate and produce life so that we can give that life out to others. That's, that's the one accord of what we're doing. And all of this that we're learning to do is through the blood of Jesus. I say, well, you're doing it. It's me doing it. I don't know. It's just me. It's just me doing it. Wait a minute. Do you know that because you're a son, he sent the spirit into your soul, soul, that you might become a son? Well, do you have any idea how the Holy Spirit is causing you to become a son? By becoming one with you. The Holy Spirit is be one, one with you. When you exercise this type of spiritual truth, it's, it's God the Father, it's the Lord Jesus Christ, it's the Holy Spirit, and it's you. This life is going through. The more you exercise it, the stronger you get in it, more direct more powerful you have in it, and you'll find, you'll find everything you're looking for. In other words, everything about what God is doing with us as sons, everything becomes simpler and simpler and simpler. Just to think about where you were a year ago, two years ago, five years ago, and thinking about your position with Jesus. I mean, you were actually working and, and, and trying to figure out, uh, I'm in Jesus or I, I'm not in Jesus or, or uh, uh, where am I? So faith has caused you to come. And by the blood of Jesus. Now this power of the blood of Jesus, <clears throat> I, I, I believe is, is uh, the second greatest mystery of the ages. The first one is Christ in us, the hope of glory. The second is what all the blood of Jesus does and how the entire kingdom of God works through the blood of Jesus. And how, how much I don't even know about it. You know, I've got, what, seven or eight scriptures on the blood of Jesus and what it does, and I've been meditating on them for all these years, and I know blah, 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 little bitty baby. So the other day I was thinking about, okay, the blood of Jesus sanctifies me. All right, so we know sanctification means <clears throat> that we are bought and we are <clears throat> sanctified for Jesus. But then it talks about the blood of Jesus and all these other scriptures, and it's like I begin to get a vision of, 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 of <laughs> the blood of Jesus coming through the Spirit of God and surrounding me and everything that pertains to me. That the blood of Jesus, everything that pertains to me is sanctified unto me, unto Jesus, by the blood, everything. Then I began to see that, wow, wow, this is where the shield of faith works. 
quenching the fiery darts of the devil. It's the blood of Jesus that doesn't let them in. So the shield of faith works by the blood of Jesus. Everything in the kingdom of God for us is working by the blood of Jesus. Why? Because that blood had the eternal life. It is the eternal life. And I keep looking into those scriptures in Revelation and thinking, oh man, there is going to be so much more to know about this life. The life became flesh. Whoo! It's coming in you. Very simple principle of sowing and reaping. Sowing and reaping. Very simple principle. Okay? That is so simple, if you would realize that everything is going on with you in your life, you are in a process of reaping it, what you sowed, and giving you opportunity to sow more. In what way? Every way. In every way. All right, so now we talk about money almost, and then we'll go back to something else. Let's see, where is it here? Okay, this is in, in the book of Proverbs. Book of Proverbs. Honor the Lord with your substance and with the first fruits of all your increase. Now, this is Proverbs, and there's my phone. Right, oh, my God. Uh, uh, okay, so the first fruits of all your substance. Now, let's take this. What is faith? It is the substance of things hoped for, right? Substance. It's a substance. Any increase that you get that comes into your faith becomes a living substance. So Proverbs is all, all, everything of Proverbs. You can read it carnally, you can read it from religion, and you can read it, am I preaching your sermon? Okay, good. <laughs> you can read it from the standpoint of, of just, you know, some ideas, but the fact is it's, it's God t talking to his sons. My son, do, 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 do. And I'm, I'm fortunate with, in our house church, we go, we've gone into, into the book of Proverbs, and he just opened up every, every, every time just more and more and more of the life of it. All right, so honor the Lord with all your substance and with the first fruits of all your increase. Now, what for? Because in heaven, your life right now Part of you is in heaven, in case you don't know that. You're waiting to get there. Well, part of you is already there. Heaven has come into you, and it's coming in more and more and more into your soul, the experience of it. We got these little kids that are coming around, and uh, two weeks ago or last week, I can't remember, uh, they came to me, little kids. They came to me, hey, would you tell us about heaven? So we went into the room for an hour, and I gave them my, my whole testimony about going to heaven. And they were just so blessed and said, that is so right. We know that's right. We know that's right. <laughs> I go, whoa. <laughs> Tell your parents. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. <laughs> uh, it was, it was a, I haven't given the testimony in so long. And the, the little kids just said they want it. And uh, the, the youngest was uh, one and a half. And they're just all sitting there as, this, as the little souls just opening up and they're receiving it. Increase of, of all of your substance. Okay, so one of the wisdoms, one of the things that God teaches us, uh, our teacher, the wisdom, wisdom, the spirit of wisdom, working through the blood of Jesus, is to recognize, to recognize it. Now, be, because what I'm saying to you is so important to our in generation here, is that that's why the devil came against money, having to do with the church, the tithing, giving money. Uh, he came against it so bad that there are millions of Christians around the world. They don't give, they don't sow any, they don't put anything in, in money because it all became a carnal concept. And, and of course, then the, the misuse of the money by, the, by the, the ministries or the church or the hierarchy or whatever it is. All right? But for you, it's important. It's important. Because you're looking to get your paycheck or you get to close off that deal and get the money, okay, so that you can pay your bills and have some money left over to go do something else. Okay. Now, 
that focus trains you to be able to see in your soul an increase coming in, that you can take that increase and tithe it to the Lord because he wants it so that he can multiply you back more. Multiply you back more. Be diligent. Be faithful. Look what it says. So shall your barns be filled with plenty, and your presses shall burst out with new wine. So just take that from the attitude of the soul on what you can expect. You got a little problem? It's nothing compared to what's coming. What is going to explode in you? The life is going to explode. Got a little problem? It's just going to explode bigger and bigger and more and more, more and more life. Okay? So you look for it. Now, he goes into another standpoint looking at it in verse 11. This is in Proverbs 3. So first we had be diligent to look for the increase. Okay? And here's what he's going to do with that is cause it to multiply in us. Look what he says in 11. My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord. Neither be weary in his corrections. For whom the Lord loves, he corrects. Even as a father, the son in whom he delights. If you haven't had a bunch of this, ask him. This is so good for you. Because if you don't receive this, then you will walk in a place, and maybe you're doing really good, and you're thinking good, and everything good, and you will get creeped. A little creep called pride will sneak up on you and bite you in the rear end. Okay? Because correction and instruction are the path of life while we're here. So how does it come? Well, he doesn't give you sickness to tr teach you something. Usually, it'll be people. It could be a circumstance of some kind. Okay, that he's, you know, but it's not the curse. He doesn't deal. He's not ministering the curse upon you. Okay? So when I'm looking to the fact that anything that's sharp, that's, that's challenging me, that's doing something hard in my soul, I'm looking, is this your chastening, Father? And he'll say, yes, son, lay down and take it. As a, son do, as a father does to his son. You don't stand your son up, your little son. I don't know, this generation, I don't, they forgot the word of God. You, you lay him over the bed and you hit him with the something. Oh, really? Generation that doesn't, doesn't chastise their children is a stupid generation. And the fruit's out here in this world. Big time. Okay. <laughs> Big time. Okay, so, yes, I said that, stupid. <laughs> For whom the Lord loves, he will correct you. He will correct you. Okay. Now, I want to remind you of something about this. Because there's no telling how this correction is going to come. I've had it come all kinds of ways. From, I thought it was really evil, that was correcting me, and I thought it was somebody good, and I received it. And all kinds of different ways, okay? But he'll show you. He'll let you know it's him. If it's him, it's going to hurt. It's going to cut something away. Imagine yourself being a tree, and the guy is coming to prune you because the season is over, and you, you gave all your apples away, and now it's time to prune you. Well, you're sitting there going, oh, man, I did such a good job with those apples. I did, man, look, they picked all my apples, and, oh, man, they're going to sell them, make lots of money off my apples. Yeah, and chip, 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 chip. What are you doing? What are you doing to me? What are you doing to me? What? Uh -huh. What's the purpose? Bring forth more fruit. Nothing can happen to you, son. Nothing. But your reaction to how you bear chastisement. It's what's important. And I'll remind you, he laid down his soul life, his flesh life and his soul life, completely. All the identity of Jesus, the man from Nazareth, he laid down 
his soul life. He laid it down. And it was necessary. And that's what the chastisement will do. It will help you come out of the old man and into the new. Walking in oneness with the Lord. Hallelujah. I love that message because I give it to myself all the time. And I've been living in it. And I can tell you the fruit of it is real. But sometimes you don't know. It's so confusing what happens. But you can trust God. You can trust God beyond any circumstance. I mean, you look at some of those martyrs, and they, I was reading about one. His hands were all chopped off, and, and, they, and they chopped off, I don't know, his head, and, 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 and then they burned his body. All these guys went through so much stuff with one testimony. Thank you, Lord, I trust you. Thank you, Lord, I trust you. And what I found was that in the times of severe chastisement, which I have had unto death, my choice was to trust him. Is this God or not God? I didn't, I, I've learned now, I don't even get into the questions. I don't even try to figure out if it's God or not God. Do I rebuke the devil or not? He'll show you if it's him. And you can trust him. You can trust him all the way through. And that's what is being tried. Can you trust the Lord in that situation that you're in that looks so dire? that looks so terrible in that relationship with those people. We had a testimony in India that showed up to where uh, this couple got married, and, and our, our, our little pastor over there uh, got her. She, yeah, she's about that size, so I call her a little pastor. And, and, and got, the, got the wife from going back, go back to the husband, talk to him again, and she talked with both. They were going to get divorced irrecyclable, irreconcilable differences. Okay? And she sent me a picture of him in a bathtub getting, getting baptized. He just, they just repented. Okay? So the question is, do you love him? Do you know he loves you? You can trust him. You can trust him with your money, with your wife, with your children, with your family. You can trust him with everything. Even if you make a mistake, he makes all things work to your good. You can trust him. You can trust him.